Hey, everybody. Welcome to the final nine holes from the Texas State Championships. we got the back nine of round three at Evergreen Disc Golf Course. Big, sexy commentary coming back. we got Jeremy Colling and Nate Sexton. Thanks for tuning in. Yeah, we got the back nine coming up, and uh, although Ricky has a pretty safe lead, um, you know, it's very windy out there to remind everyone, and anything could happen. But uh, more interesting, we can have a really good battle for second place. Yeah, hole 10 is pretty straightforward. You just kind of got that one OB sand trap over to, over to the right side. You have a pretty strong left to right wind as well. Um, the one good thing to uh, to be looking at from the tee is that tree that you just caught the... Oh, no. Look at that. Sit down. <laughs> yeah, man. So the, I heard the crowd go crazy. I, the guys near the tee were like, you hit the basket. And I said, oh, did it sit down? And the yeah, man, yeah. <laughs> but uh, oh, apparently not. Rick with a nice low forehand. Yeah, he's inside the circle there. Could be looking at a putt from uh, probably about 20 to 25 feet. Will swung it a little bit wider. Yeah, but that's still, with that left to right win, it's going to give it a good push. He'll probably be inside the circle's edge. Yeah. And this one seemed to be a little bit early for Paul. That wind is really going to push it. That needs to sit down, otherwise it's going to, yep, yep, in the sand trap. found the sand trap, unfortunate. Going to be putting from probably close to 35, 40 feet. This is me from about 40, 45, straight into the wind, kind of trying for a spin putt. Oh, Gave it a good bid, but not quite. Yeah, there's a good height to that headwind there, but just a little bit to the left. Paul's probably circle's edge and just barely missed it. This is Will, also from circle's edge. And a really nice putt there. Taking yeah, that was, that's tailwind. That's a nice putt from Will. That's something he's been working on probably more than anything else lately. And um, it's really showing, uh, showing off in his game lately. Yeah, definitely. I think that practice has been paying off for him because he, he was really putting well in this round. So Paul taking a bogey, unfortunately. Here's me with my sandpaper block trying to fix the damage of that little cement <laughs> circle across to my, uh, my Firebird. Yeah, that's kind of controversial. I think that those cement blocks look really pretty. Um, I just kind of wish they were covered with some sort of non-disc ruining surface. But That would be personal. great, right? Yeah, it's the it's technology of the future. I'm sure we'll get there. So yeah. bogey for Paul, birdies for Rick and Will. On to hole 11. What do you think about this one, Jerm? Um, I don't think it gets prettier than this. Uh, first off, you have that beautiful, gorgeous tree down there right by the basket. The really nice sand trap. The water circles nicely. It's fair. It's a long shot, but at the same time, um, achievable for most any pro. Yeah, I agree. Rick is going to go we had a really, high speed. Yeah, we, we had a really tough left to right kind of almost not really headwind but it was kind of a strange wind it was really tough to judge off the tee because you had those trees kind of blocking the wind and right there you see rick's shot kind of gets pushed away from him a little bit it was really tough to get a good read on how much the wind was going to push it over to the right yeah definitely you don't want to be you know too you don't want to trust the wind too much and throw it in the water like an idiot you know you want to make sure you're getting that read correct and you can swing just enough the one thing that you'd like to avoid there is the uh, going too wide like you did uh, the first round and landing in that sand trap. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, see if you make the adjustment here and go something maybe a little bit straighter. Yeah, especially after seeing what uh, had happened to Rick and Will shots, I tried to adjust my line a little more inside. Yeah, that's great. That low ceiling to avoid the uh, the wind and straighter to the target to avoid the sand trap, and right there, your part. Beautiful yeah. shot. The skip was great. It really just got his nose up and let it fly all the way there. And Paul just got a great line from you. Looks like he's throwing his FD3. Yep. Put it a little higher. That's kind of how you want it. And and that looking. disc is so overstable, and typically that thing is going to go pretty far left, but that wind is just pushing it down, pushing it down, and he's going he's gonna to have a tap in there for his birdie. Yeah, perfect shot. Rick can't really do much from there. Just got to put it in close. I'm expecting to see the same from Will. Yep, yeah. perfectly done. Last thing you want to do here is leave yourself more than 10 feet when you don't need to. 
Yeah, I mean, even this putt was a little bit scary. Yeah, you saw, you saw a great drive. It's time to capitalize. If you do something silly and you lose focus for a second. Yeah, the just... putt will go right up into the yellow band in a hurry if you let the nose get out. That's right. Nice birdies there from Paul and Nate. And um, OK Par is there with uh, with Rick and Will. And yep. Paul feels good. You know, he's getting he's got his stroke back and he's thinking, all right, you know, maybe I can do it. He's only down like, what, seven or eight strokes here? With, Something, uh, somewhere in that neighborhood, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nine strokes with uh, seven to go. It's a he's tall got that. order. It's a tall order, <laughs> but, you know, maybe an ace, maybe an eagle. He wants up for the challenge. It's Paul. For sure. Yeah, that's right. Hole 12, but, man. This is a tough one, especially with the wind we had. It's a, There's a lot of water in play. You can see the basket coming into view here way up on the left. Uh, usually, you know, in calm wind, I think most players would take a huge hyzer off the tee, but that play was totally unavailable with the crosswind coming out of the left. Yeah, the only, only way you'd be able to go hyzer is if you catch something low, but those limbs are really in the way. That, to me, looks like the, the smart play if you have it. The side arm is going to keep you away from the water and the wind's gonna be your friend. Yeah, I just needed to get it out a little, trust it a little more. I hit that tree and it, it stole about probably 50, 60 feet off the distance I could have got. Oh, um, that is that is almost pitch perfect. I mean, you'd like to maybe be a little bit closer to the basket, maybe hyzer a bit more, but really safe play, never really in play with the trees at all, and he's way up there. Yeah, and Ricky nailed that same line, get, even and getting that hyzer. fade. Yeah, getting a little more fade, like just like you're talking about. Yeah, it's going to make that approach a lot easier. You want to throw something a little bit slower coming into the green on this hole because the basket's so close to the water, you really don't want to throw anything high speed coming in at it. Yeah, I agree with that. We'll crush this. This is getting way Oh, up. man. Yeah, that's, that's a little true trick type of thing right there. He, <laughs> When he gets on a disc, he, he puts a hurting on it. <laughs> yeah. I, I thought about laying up here with another forehand, but I kind of just decided it's go time. I need to step up here and make a special shot to try to save this three. And just looks like it got caught up just a bit too high. Oh, no. It was close, man. It's It went out of bounds right at the circle's edge. Would have been a pretty fantastic shot if I could have kept it in. Yeah, and and that was... That's what you had to do. You know, that was, you know, you're coming down the back nine. You're trying to make a move. It's time yeah. to, you know, get aggressive. And, yep. and Will, with a really nice approach there, you know, he's going to have a tailwind putt, which is what you want, um, away from the water, which is nice. Maybe a little yeah. bit further than you'd like, but still makeable. Definitely good position. Wow. Wow. Paul got let that one get away from him. Yeah, that's unusual. That that was definitely a misthrow there on his part. Never really had a chance. Um but the scuba divers were active out there. I imagine you guys this back. Yeah, actually, he. I think he had it back within two holes. So oh, somebody wow. saw was, it go in and it jumped straight in there as soon as we were done and, and retrieved it for him. So really nice. Pitch Here I am, circle's edge, trying to save that par. Unfortunately, off the top. And then Will from the paint for the birdie. Well done. Another solid putt. Will's getting that that putter heated up, man. It's really good to see. Yeah. Ball from 25. Mm. This might be about the time. Ricky's about to tap in for birdie. Paul's tapping in for his bogey. This is pretty much game, set, match for Ricky. I think that at this point, he's feeling pretty comfortable. Let's see if we uh, see some emotion here. I think you're right. Oh, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Tap yeah, it in the bogey. Nice bogey for me. A little different kind of emotion coming out. But yeah, Rick with a sweet birdie, and uh, I'm sure he's feeling pretty good. 11 shots up, not many holes to play. You even catch him crack a smile. That's not usually something he's going to do when he's uh, in the heat of battle, you know? He'll give the crowd a wave, but seeing the smile, that's usually when uh, the rest of the field knows they're in trouble. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right about that. Hole 13 is kind of an interesting little par three. You got the backhand shot straight with a mid or a putter, trying to hyzer away from the OB path. And you also have the option of taking the forehand out around the outside. This wind was off our right shoulder, um, making it kind of difficult to 
to keep the high the back end hyzer from skipping out left unless you threw something like a putter, which is kind of what it looks like Ricky threw there. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, if you had too much hyzer, this is coming in with a lot of hyzer angle, but it's a slower disc, so it actually stayed there inside the circle nicely. But yeah. uh, it also really made it difficult to get the sidearm all the way back to the basket. Yeah, I, I threw this a little bit inside, but it looks like I got some good luck splitting those trees. Oh, wow. Take, yeah. All right onto the green. Paul with his nice new AVR3 he's been trying out. And super straight. Just doesn't, doesn't quite keep the hyzer angle out of his hand that I'm sure he'd like to use the wind to help guide it in there. Yeah. He has a look. This is something you'll very rarely see. Oh, what? What, what? what was that? One of the rarest things in professional disc golf, a Ricky Waisaki layup. <laughs> I have, I don't know if I've ever seen that before. <laughs> <laughs> Smart play by Rick, though. Tailwind putt. Yeah, the last thing sure. he wants to do is I mean, catch, a, catch a nub, roll towards the out-of-bounds. I mean, obviously that's only going to happen maybe one in a hundred times, but what? what's the point of taking the risk? Well, yeah, he, he's just counting down the holes right now, counting down the throws, counting down the holes. No need to, to do anything unnecessarily, but still, I, I, he makes that putt in his sleep. That's surprising to see. Yeah. And Will with a bit of a, the first putting error that we've seen of him from this round. Um, but, you know, hopefully he can bounce back from that. Yeah, so I end up with the only birdie there. Nice for me. Get to make a little move, catch him back up to Paul and Will in that third place, second place, third place kind of battle. All right, hole 14, 807 feet. This is one of the longest holes on the course. There's a couple trees in the way, so you can't really go straight at the pin. You have the option between a hyzer or kind of a high and hyzer, and you could even throw a roller if it wasn't so windy. Yeah, the wind is really going to make us throw the air shot here. Uh, pretty strong right to left, um, but it's a favorable wind. It was kind of a right to left tailwind, and this hole really allows the grip it and rip it, man. Just let's see what you got. Yeah, I crushed this one. I mean, the line isn't great, but it's it's going very far. Yeah, that's that's great. You know, as long as left or right of that ditch there is fine. Um, and as long as you're getting a, a good bit of distance here, you know, that's really what you're looking for. Yeah. Rick taking that hyzer line. Maybe catching just a little bit of tree, but it didn't seem to slow him down all that much. Uh Oh, that's world champ love right there. That's what you get after winning a world championship. Those trees get a little bit smaller. <laughs> Will got this it looks out like Will maybe. Wide. Yeah, that, that wind's going to help him out a bunch. Um, kind of looks like that he maybe didn't quite have a comfortable footing there. Or he just seemed a little bit off there, but still with a really good result. Got good business. Yeah. yeah. And Paul taking that kind of a little lower line but trying to really rip that hyzer winds bringing it back and that is way out there yeah that's crushed yeah that, that opens up the hyzer backhand the sidearm line whatever he wants um really it's all open from up here the only thing that you really have to contend with um are these trees that you're seeing ricky avoiding pretty well here um yep. but the right side tree is really the only thing that comes in play um there's a little bit of a knoll in front of the basket that makes it kind of difficult to read the distance on this hole. Yeah, definitely. Anytime you can't really see all of the ground in between you and a basket, it's pretty tough to judge. But Will looks to have done a pretty good job, put it about 34 feet away. And just outside the circle with the tailwind putt, not too bad. Struggled with that downhill run up a little bit, ended up not getting the power I wanted. I was trying to go around that tree, and then you can see the wind almost making that distance. Oh, go goodness. Back. Oh, yeah. As soon as it skips, it's it's almost coming back towards me. Yeah, the good distance off the tee is great, but yeah, that run-up is, is awkward for even the best players. And then Paul 
just putting it <laughs> even the little jump up there at the end was just very Paul like it seems yeah and that was a great little bit another little nose up run that was so close to catching chains and dropping in yeah I have fun with those putts because when you're putting into a super hard headwind from 50 feet it's like you know it doesn't really disappoint you to miss it but it's you you know people are going to freak out if you make it and there's a bit of a putting error. It, at this point, I mean, obviously you need to make these putts. It's really important. But the last thing you want is to have that comebacker, yeah, which he does recovery. squeeze in. But, man, that that right there can play a, 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 a large toll on her coming down the stretch. Yes, yeah, he's got to be happy to make that because you really don't want to be giving one away late in the game. And then Ricky, with his patented stall putt, hit the pole and let it just float there for about one or two seconds longer than everyone else. <laughs> I don't know how he does that. I've tried it. It doesn't work for me. <laughs> and Paul with a literal drop in here. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty good. Easy pretty good. So, far as for the rest of us, birdie for Paul. Still 10 strokes up for though. So the battles. An awesome battle brewing right here. 2,600 to 25. And then 24. This is the last uh, four holes here are just awesome little finish. And speaking of awesome finishing holes, I mean, this is just setting you up for a great finish to this tournament. This is, this is the hardest hole in the, in the tournament, don't you think? I'd have to say so. I mean, there's no other hole where the number that you can take is higher than on hole 15. There's the OB on the right side, OB left side. There's Paul's, Paul's going OB for the in the middle. Right there. Oh no! He he was trying to go for the green, but he it came out a little low, and the wind kind of cut it down, and then he got that cut roll. But he was dreaming of going all the way to the wall. I wish we could have seen well, it fly a little. Also, he, it, it, there is there is no such thing as second place in Paul's book. So I mean, he's going for the gusto here. You're right about that. Mine was uh, inbounds by about a quarter inch, probably down there in the mud. <laughs> oh wow. I don't know what happened there with Rick because I can't imagine he was actually trying for that Anheuser line. But took a bad kick straight in the water. And Will letting letting out a huge hyzer. The wind that is dropping looks great it. great for about 75% and then it just drops out of the sky and yeah. drops straight down. And Probably six inches. Six inches from uh, from being in bounds. And then he and has a really this awkward kind of run up stance. Yeah. And he go he finds the water again farther up the hole. Yeah, that's a tough, tough start to the hole for Will there. Yeah. And Rick from OB to OB, the wind gets under it and takes him over the barbed wire fence. Ugh. So not very many. Uh, my shot, I guess, is the only inbound shot we've seen so far. I'm trying to get a forehand up here to the wall. But I put it a little too outside and catch the curb. Oh! <laughs> yeah, and you're kind of seeing right now why this is the hardest hole in the course. I mean, you really have to be methodical with how you play it. Ideally, you want to throw about a 320 to 325 foot shot off the tee, and then just land your approach into that wall and make your putt. Yeah. But but the um, actual execution of that is clearly much tougher. Yeah, and, and I mean, um, this the wind is just so tough with the skinny fairway. I mean, the, we've seen, what, six OBs from the lead card already? We, I've lost count. I believe it's and, six. And the hard thing about this approach is not only are you trying to hit that wall, when you do, that wall's in the way of your putt. So yeah. it's, it's a really tricky shot in general. Yeah, I just barely really cleared the wall. It. Holy cow. <laughs> Uh, Super it's rich. beautiful to watch him play, isn't it? It's yeah, that's, really, a, that's uh, an insane. So, double OB five could be could be one of the first ones on this hole. You're not going to see too many double OB fives. How many players in the game are making that putt? Oh man, um, maybe one to two. Yeah, well, he might be one of them right there. Yeah, that's a great putt in its own right from Paul. Yeah, it was almost blind. It looked like the the branches are right in his face. Um, Little side note, the, the tournament directors actually gave us a two-meter relief off the barbed wire for this round, which is on the other side of that wall, as Will tries to tap in his six. And 
It was a good decision by the track directors, I feel. Just to give two yeah. two meters off barbed wire should be a uh, standard thing, I think, just because you don't... I agree. It sh- it, it, that should be in the PDJ rulebook, in my opinion, as well. Nobody wants to slice their hand open, and yeah. um, it's a good... Good on the term staff. Paul with the only par there. Um, and a couple but, bogeys and Will with the unfortunate triple. And this is a good hole to kind of get back on to uh, back in the swing of things after uh, <laughs> I, yeah. had, I lost track on how many OBs that was. But yeah, yeah. This, this one is a straightforward little we'll 250 foot hole. Yep. Yeah. Just kind of a little woods tunnel. There is still the barbed wire fence though in there. So if you go right into the woods, your OB, obviously the path on the left as well, but it's just kind of a straightforward tunnel. All with a pretty good shot with the putter, right in the, right in the circle. And I believe that was his AVR three again, is that correct? It was, yeah. So I went with a different play than I had practiced here because the wind was just so heavy. I tried to go flex to get outside this tree. It worked okay. Yeah, that's better than honestly it was looking. There was a lot of branches up there that it could have got caught up in, and yes. inside inside the circles, fine many time of the week. Yeah, yeah, and not OB. And Rick gets a good bounce here to stay in bounds. And Will, I'm I'm assuming is going putter. He's such a great putter thrower. Yep, yep. Good recovery from Will do. after. Yeah, after that seven, it's nice to get a good putter shot right there in the circle. Rick just almost goes back to back. Yeah. Well, that wouldn't have been surprising one bit, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh! Just it just kind of left side high. Will for his birdie. Mm. It seems like he, in the last four holes or so, he's just kind of fallen out of that rhythm that he was in uh, coming into this round. You know, yeah. Three quarters of this round so far, he was really, really playing great and um, just kind of getting away from himself, maybe getting a little impatient and um, just lost a few strokes in the last few. Yeah, a couple miscues on these last few holes. Now, Paul going to take the only birdie here. The rest of us have to settle for a bit of a disappointing par, even in heavy wind. I mean, 255 feet, you still feel like you ought to be able to make it happen. And count down to the final two holes here. Rick with eight strokes over Paul. Paul's still trying to catch the lead, I'm sure. Um, but more securely, he's got a couple strokes on that, that battle for third place. And yeah, on yeah. to probably the most straightforward hole in the course, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you agree with that? Yeah, I mean, I think you got the path as an OB, but in general, it's pretty straightforward. I think the thing that kind of saved this hole from being truly a boring hole is the little bit of the knoll in front of the in front of the pole. So you can't really get a good read, and there's a little bit of fun kind of skip action that you have to think about with the uh, the hillside. Yeah, the only way you're really going to know where your disc is is based on there you go. The uh, spectators, if you're lucky enough to be playing lead card and you have spectators, then you'll know. Okay, yeah. that's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, but if you great. don't, the rest of us are uh, sitting there and saying, please just be close. You know, you have no idea, really. Yeah, you're totally right. You can't really tell once it gets over that hill. Did it go out of bounds? Did it stop? Is it rolling? You have no idea. Right. And I wouldn't be surprised here. If, if In Ricky's head, he's thinking, what if we got a little ace here, a little bit of a spice? <laughs> You know, why not show off a little bit? You know, I mean, he's he's got almost a 10 stroke lead at the Texas State Championships. Whoa. Why not try to get an ESPN? That mm. would be sweet. Will there with a bit of a grip lock. I don't know what happened there. Just a late release took him straight out of bounds. But yeah, Ricky definitely did take an yeah. aggressive line there, staying away from the OB, keeping it high enough to give it a run. And he's kind of left himself about 45 feet. He left him right at about Ricky range. Oh boy! Right oh, that far. You called right. it. Yeah, right about Ricky range. Sometimes I, I do feel I think I've said this before that nothing will make you putt great like an eight-stroke lead. <laughs> sure. Just lets you really be at peace. You know, you can just kind of you can just kind of show the crowd what you can do. 
I actually haven't. Re- I wouldn't really know. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if I've ever been. Oh, okay. Oh no. Yeah, that I don't know. Maybe that was just realizing. Okay, maybe with seven or with eight to go with one, I could do it. But with nine, probably not. So he might have just. Yeah, kinda. I think he's a little frustrated to not be able to mount a, a better charge at Ricky. Yeah, it's just a little. Looks like there. it was a little bit impatient. Maybe just you know got maybe got away from him too. You know, could be a combination of both. Yeah. All right, man. The final hole, pretty crazy finishing hole with the the man-made waterfalls on the green, 550 feet OB down the entire right side. Lake coming into play left at the end, and then on the green, like I said, you got two waterfalls. So pretty kind of scenic, cool looking spot for a basket. It's really hard to even appreciate how much slope there is on that little mountain just with that drone footage yeah it's a really precarious green it's very difficult to get your disc to land there you have to match the angle of your disc to the hillside otherwise you're going to roll right back down yeah absolutely i got too far left on that shot so i'm kind of cutting off my angle to the to the basket but i was scared of kind of flipping out over that path so i just kind of played it a little too safe looks like rick kind of did the same yeah, it's going to make it difficult with the pine trees in the way there. But like you said, it's much better to finish over there left short of the water than to go out of bounds over the cart path. Yeah. Which... Paul's going for everything here, and it just never flexed. So he is out of bounds over the cart path. He'll have an unobstructed shot, but obviously taking that penalty. Will looked lucky he was going to suffer. Will is going. Eight, but he actually got kind of the, the accidental roller. Yeah, we call that a roller in the business. <laughs> a little bit of both, half throw, half roller. Worked out for him here. Maybe the best standstill thrower I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah he's, he just generates so much power with that reach back that he can. He really doesn't even need to do a run up on the tee. Yeah. So I, Paul uh, had his phone with him, and he told me right before the shot, I asked him if I needed to get a three, and he said, looks like Eddie and Philo, and it turned out Germ as well have passed you, and you do need to get a three to get third place. So it's I tried to kind of give that shot a little extra juice and uh, got myself to about 30 feet, but tough putt. Oh, wow. And Ricky, that's if you're going to be crowned the Texas State champion, it, it's nice to do so with a tap-in. Yeah, absolutely. That was a fantastic shot. Controlled the angle so perfectly. Paul just and, saved by the rock. Oh, that's a four-time world champ love, and here we are. All the marbles on the line right here. Yeah, to get in that tie. Oh, what a fantastic putt. I was so happy into that headwind. For a while, I kind of thought, this putt's impossible. I'm almost <laughs> certainly going to throw it in the waterfall. Look in. at that emotion. I couldn't believe I love it. it. <laughs> double fist pump is as cool as you're going to ever see Nate yeah. Sexton. I mean, your cool character, double fist pump Nate Sexton is, that's like that's super That's on another seven. level. Oh, yeah. Paul to take second place. Got it. No doubt about it. Here he is. Texas State champion 2017, Ricky Wysocki. Dominating performance, oh, really. I mean, what? nobody was touching him this weekend. Yeah, the win by 10 strokes against the field of, you know, I mean, arguably four, three or four of the top five players in the world. Um, it's just dominating. He came out of the gate 17 under. What, what can you say about it? He's just a man. Yeah, um, definitely. So, And I also want to throw out a, a little congrats to Eddie Ward, too. Just 17 years old, coming up there and tying German eye. That's no small feat. I know we're pretty good. So he really did the something last shout out. I want to say shout out to Nolan Grider for making it into the Texas Disc Golf Hall of Fame. Congratulations, Nolan oh, nice. Grider. Congrats, Nolan. So, yeah, just to close, thanks to Jomez. Thanks to the TDs down in Houston. Thanks to Germ. Thanks to everybody. I had a great time down there. I can't wait to be back and play this evergreen course again. It was something special. Thanks for tuning in, guys.